have it. Pouring down with rain. 21 pound mirror, what a beauty. Well, we're back. Matrix Submerged is here again. And this year, believe me, we have got some absolutely fantastic coverage for you as to what goes on below the surface. But today, despite the fact that it is freezing cold, I'm going to be getting in the water to have a look at what goes on with method feeders. Polly's on the peg. Let's get straight on with the job. Right then, method feeder fishing. Arguably one of the most popular methods and trying to catch fish, whether it's commercials, whether it's naturals, whether it's pleasure fishing, these things are absolutely brilliant, aren't they? Now I've seen them below the surface before. What would you like to know about them? Everything, because when you're sitting there, well, we've got a bite now. Oh, hello. Already. That's oh, a liner. That's, is it? I'm sure that's a liner. Oh. He's got a bite. How exciting <laughs> is this going to be? We are actually And that was the fishing. first jack. That was... We, yeah, we're actually fishing at the moment as well. So whilst this piece is about working out what these things do and looking at them underwater, we're actually going to fish with them as well and see what happens on the yeah, deck. No what guarantee I, we're going to catch no, them once I get in there, but there we But go. what I want to know, Rob, is I've cast that out there, whether that was a line, I think it was, or a take, or when you're getting indications, What's your bait looking like on the bottom? How's it landing? Obviously, hopefully the feeder's landing the correct way up. How long's it taking the bait to disperse? Does a little bit come off it, even though you think you've loaded up nicely, be it in a mould, or now with the new ones, just by your hand, just pushing it in. Very curious just to see what is happening under the water, because big, every angler can't see that. Big difference between ground bait and pellets as well, aren't there? We've yes, got different types yes. of pellets here. We've got, yeah. uh, we're gonna look at hook baits as well. We're gonna look at hook links. Yeah. Basically, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at the majority of the standard methods that you guys use. We're going to establish a few truths, we're going to bust a few myths, and we're going to clarify once and for all exactly what goes on below the surface when you're method feeding with that, these. That is the question when every angler's sitting there, and hopefully you guys are going to see it now. What's happening when your method feeder lands out there? Whatever bait you're using, whatever hook bait you're using, be it a pop-up, a pellet, maggots, just to see what's happening. Oh, oh. was that, that wasn't you, that was another. No, that, that, was might, a plug that, then, that looked no, like I thought a plug. that had dropped back then, as if it was on. That was definitely a plaque. He'll have one in a minute, he'll have one. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to leave that? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, oh, it is hello. <laughs> One of the joys of doing these things is we have to come to clear water fisheries. Obviously you lads fish in muddy puddles a lot of the time because there's so many fish in them. We have to come to slightly clearer waters and that generally means there's a few carping. And guess what? Polly is attached to a tank. Now, what's your PB? Have you had a 20? I have had a 20, You have yes. had a 20, ah, yeah. right. But okay. that was in France. I've had a 23 what's over your, here. What's your English PB? 23, 23, yeah, on the pole. There's a chance. There really is a chance. Now, strictly speaking, he shouldn't have actually had a bite because there's not that many fish in here. <laughs> 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 and first cast, he's had a bite. And first cast, he's had an indication. And second cast, he's hooked a fish as well. Have you ever thought about becoming a carp angler, Polly? No, I'm not that good. I reckon we're going to need to get a landing net out, aren't we? Now, Polly wasn't actually expecting to catch anything, really. So, I've got your decent landing net. What he's really done, he's took my landing net off and he's going to make me look an idiot now with his one. It's not a massive fish, but... It's a lovely fish. It is a fish, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. 
That's is awesome. it a thir is it a very 30? quick? I don't think is it, it is. Is it a 30? <laughs> I don't think it's 13. <laughs> there he is. They are a beautiful fish. That was just a second plop in. But a few guys were going to show how the feeder lands and what it looks like underwater. To quash all those wonders while he's sitting there thinking, what's happening? How my feed has landed and how the bait's coming off of it. To catch a beauty like this. Well, I'm going to start with an open-ended feeder, a small one, um, 25 gram. But before I start on the feed, we're robbing the water, I'm going to put one of their inline leads on so I can just simply pull off the open-ended feeder and slip on one of their inline leads. I can have a cast around with that just have a little drag around, find a clear bit, nice gravel, um, a gravelled area that Rob would have a film showing the feeder landing, hopefully how it lands and then as the bait disperses off it, be it ground bait pellets. So we then can understand what's happening when your feeder, your method feeder, is in the water. So I'll have a cast around now and just see if I can find a clear bit. Right, well I've been casting out there for probably five, ten minutes now and I've found a clear area where Rob can do his filming. Seems to be just on a slight slope. It's definitely gravelly because it, it's, it's clear, there's nothing. I've only hit weed or if it is part weed, um, probably three or four metres off of it. And the probably depth I've probably got there is probably maybe three foot, maybe that sort of depth. Um, and I think that's an area where once I start putting bait in, you'd attract the fish to. But the main thing is what we want to show you is, it's all right, you load your feeder up and cast it in, think you've got it right, but it's sitting there thinking, what is my feeder doing? What's that method feeder doing on the bottom? How's the bait sitting around it with the different hook baits? And that's what we're going to show you. Right, just take you through just a few baits that I'm going to use for this session with you. I've got some pellets. I've got some Hinders 2.3 micro pellets. Some I've just left natural colour and then some I've just dyed up red with a little bit of food colouring, just so as if we can't see so well the natural colour, you'll be able to see these with the bits of red in them on the bottom. I've knocked out a little bit of my supercharged method mix, which I shall use that on its own, and then I might mix some with some pellets just to see what happens as it lands um, and what's happening on the bottom. Um, and then just hook baits, I've got some dead reds that I may put on just to see what that looks like out there. I've got some pop-ups and I've got some uh, slow sinkers. Um, I've got a few pellets, some six and eight mils in there. Um, and also, if it is very dark to see, to mix, I've got some little all sorts that I can mix in that's very fluorescent and all stick out so you can actually see it on the bottom better. Uh, until we start filming out there, Rob starts filming, we won't know exactly what footage that you can see. So that'll just help. Um, for the camera more for the for the filming. There are two method feeders here that I'll be using, the open method feeder and the standard method feeder. Difference being with the standard method feeder, I'll be using a mould where I'm moulding it round in a nice perfect little formed hump around the the method with the bait sitting on the table there, little bait table we've got on there with that one. And then with this one, simply I'll be moulding it just with my hand. And obviously, if you're going to put less bait in, you've got a smaller one, just like a little shoe that you can just plug it, put your hook bait in, and you're not putting loads in. And I'd normally start on a smaller feeder and then step up to a big one if you want to put more bait in, because you can't take out what you've put in. But that's what we're going to go through. We're going to cast out there and just see what they do underwater. Good job. 
Right, that's me rigged up, ready to go. Just about to start to rain as well, so it's not just me going to be getting wet, is it? And it's cold. <laughs> and it's May. Eight <laughs> degrees this morning, by the way, chaps. Eight degrees. Yeah. So, what's first on the agenda? Well, I found a clear spot for you out there. Yeah. Gravel. Yeah. Nice bottom. About three foot deep. Okay. And we're going to start on the open end method, and we're going to try it with pellets and with ground bait, and then we'll change the conventional method feeder with the same pellets and ground bait and just see what is happening under the water out there. Okay, okay. Firstly, with the ground bait, are you putting it through a mould or are you squeezing it? No, it'll be a mould. Okay. And it will be pushed with my hand, so it'll be pushing my hand on the open method feeder. Yeah. But the conventional one, it'd be moulded. Fantastic. I'd be interested to see the difference on that because yeah. I reckon the squeeze will have a big effect. Yeah. Right, rock and roll time. Right, I'm just going to load up and cast out. As you can see, I've got a nice bright hook bait on there. I've got a little wafter on there. So Rob will be able to see it out there and you guys will be able to see it as well. So I'm just going to load up. So a little pinch in there. That's it. Very simple, loaded. Now, you'll be thinking, as it lands, as hook bait come out, what exactly happens? Well, we're going to see now. The heavens had opened and we all looked set for a wet day. But as the first cast hit the water, it was time to get below the surface and unlock the secrets of the method feeder. The first thing I noticed as soon as I went below the surface was the pellets had come off the feeder high in the water, maybe even on impact. These could be seen slowly falling in a cloud. I followed these pellets through the water column down to the lake bed, and it was interesting to see that most of the pellets fell at different rates, with the smaller particles almost hanging in the water. You can see that where the pellets have landed on the bottom, the feeder isn't in shot. As I moved to my left, closer to Polly on the bank, I could spot the bright hook bait and the feeder sitting on the bottom. The feeder had landed the correct way up, but it was nearly empty with just a few pellets remaining inside. It was obvious the feeder had landed over a metre closer to Polly than where it had entered the water, and the feed had settled on the bottom higher up the slope. We repeated this test a couple of times with similar results before stepping up in feeder weight. It was interesting to see that the result was the same, with a lot of pellets coming off the feeder as it hit the water. Again the feeder landed a metre away from where it had entered the water. I was starting to think that maybe the way the feeder was hitting the clip could be pulling the feeder back towards Polly as it hit the surface. It was clear though that what was happening below the surface was very different to what Polly was imagining, so I headed back to the bank and had a chat with him. Well, that was really interesting. What we did there was we looked at three different types of feeders with the same bait to work out a control first. So we've got the small, the medium, the large, the 32, the 25 and the 40 gram. Cast them out with the same bait and we wanted to see what happened. Now, what do you think happened? Well, I'd like to think that it landed nicely on the bottom with my bait around the feeder and it just gradually just dispersed off the feeder to reveal the hook bait. In a perfect world, wouldn't that be Well, lovely? yeah, that's, yeah. However, the same thing happened almost every time. You remember me just saying to you, hit the clip a little bit harder, yeah, hit which, it a bit yeah. lighter, we change it round. The reason for that was because the pellets were actually coming off on impact. On impact. Now, I wanted to see whether it was the feeder that was causing it, whether it was your casting style that was causing it, or whether it's the pellets. Because if you think about it, it can only be one, one or the you, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that, or yeah, that. Yeah. So we varied the cast. Yeah. To a hard one and a soft one, they came off. We varied the feeder between the small, which is 25, the medium, which is 32, and the large, which is 40. Yeah. And it came off. <laughs> so it can, the, the consistent factor throughout that was the pellets. Now, I've got a bit of a theory on this. Just before we started that, yes, I got soaked, but so did you, didn't you? Mm, yes. Yeah. And I think your pellets got a bit yeah. wet. What did you think of your pellets before? Well, to be fair, I, I did notice they were a little bit more damp or wetter than what I probably would use them, but 
I'm quite happy with them still. Are you really? And in my mind, I'd be quite happy that they're around that feeder as that goes down. See, I, I think it's also down for the squeeze. I've seen this before when I've tested this sort of thing, and I think it's down for the squeeze or alternatively, you know, how you're using your mould as well. I think you really do need to squeeze it on, particularly when they're wet, because they do come off on impact. Well, to be fair, and even on the mould, on the press, like it's an overall press that's around it, you're not putting as much pressure as if you would with your hand. So therefore, in my mind, I would say it'd come off there quicker than with the open-ended method. Well, I'll tell you what, that's something we'll put to the test in a minute and we'll see the difference yeah. with a good press using the mould yes. or alternatively yeah. a good hand squeeze. Yeah. So what we've done now, we've seen consistently that when it went out, the pellets came down as it hit the surface. Now, there's a couple of other things that I really picked up. We're only on a fairly small pond. There is a bit of a wind blowing. It's blowing down that way. It's not been blowing that long. There's a fair amount of tow underwater. Yes, sir, really. So when your pellets come off, they were coming off on the surface and drifting down at a very, very light angle, but the bits were hanging in the water and moving and, a lot yeah, further. Yeah, yeah. And after 25, 30 seconds or so, they would be about a meter away, I would say. Yeah. Interestingly, yeah. downwind, because normally you'd expect it to go, it'd the, go the opposite way. The tow would be, because you're under tow. So I think that indicates to me that it's just starting, and I think if it had been blowing this way for a long time, it'd be going the other way. Yeah, it but would that's change. Just something to think about, guys, if you've got bits in your in your feeder and the fish are feeding mid-water rather than down on the deck, it could be taking them away. The other thing that was really interesting as well is where you cast out and hit your clip quite hard, Yeah. when you were doing it to begin with, to yeah. get that distance over there, the bounce back between where the pellets were coming off as it's hit the surface yeah. and where the feeder was landing was about a metre. Yeah. So yeah. you imagine if yeah. you did that ten times... Yeah. You're, you're putting a layer of bait past your, exactly. past your point you're fishing. So, just as a little te test now, just as a little test, and guys back at home, think about this as well. When you're out in a match and the, bait, uh, the bites dry up, take a rod length off, stick an extra rod on the clip, and cast a little bit further, yeah, which, or even half, which we, so you're which we do. Oh. That. Oh. oh, we've got one. So, test time. We've got some more pellets. We've mixed them up, they're not quite as wet. It's not raining. I'm gonna get wet again, you can sit on the dry. Chuck that one out, we'll do the same test again with slightly drier pellets and see we'll what Just happens. see if, yeah. And that might be the key. Well, Rob's on his way out there again. We're gonna try it now with the drier pellets and just see if um, they work better, they don't come off on impact. Same with ground bait, I've made some slightly dry ground bait just to see. But typically, as we're just about to start filming again, heavens have opened again, so I've got it covered over, but hopefully we may see a difference. Very interesting to see what's happened. I'm really excited about this. For the next test, we were sticking with the open method feeder, but baiting it with the freshly prepared dryer pellets. Polly cast it out and it would be interesting to see what would happen. Even with the drier pellets, it was clear that the pellets had come off at the surface of the water and were slowly dropping towards the lake bed. Having done similar tests before, I wasn't that surprised by what I was seeing. I know from experience that getting pellets to stick onto a method feeder with no binder can be difficult, depending on the type of pellet used. I was keen to get Polly to have a recast using just ground bait to eliminate any issues with the feeders. Polycast the open feeder baited with the supercharged method mix. As the feeder dropped through the water, a few tiny bits of ground bait did break off, but I was pleased to see the feeder sitting on the bottom with the bait in position. This gave me the confidence to say that the issue was with the stickiness of the pellets and not with the feeders. It was great to see the feeder slowly breaking down and then the hook bait, a wafter in this case, pop out and fall next to the feeder. 
Interestingly, it fell towards the front of the feeder rather than out of the back, just like many people believe. Another interesting aspect of the setup was the visibility of the line. Polly was using the new Horizon Mono and it was as close as to being invisible as I think you can get. We repeated the same test with different weights of open method feeder to get a conclusive result. Each time the feeder reached the bottom with the bait intact. You can see from this cast that the presentation is how we all imagine it to be when we're method feeder fishing. As the bait breaks down you start to see the hook bait appearing from beneath the ground bait. I decided to play Mr Carp and encourage it free and at this point the wafter seems to pop free and again lands towards the front of the feeder. I pulled the line to indicate a bite and you can see how very little bait is left behind when the feeder is retrieved. I'm now going to put on, obviously with our feeders we can quickly change them, I'm going to put a method feeder on with a mould and just see if there's any difference. Obviously I won't know until Rob's come back in, but I'm going to put on now the method feeder. Let's quick change it. Polly had switched to a standard alloy method feeder and we reverted back to baiting it with just pellets. This was to see if the different design of feeder and also the use of a mould would help the pellets stick to the feeder. Polly cast to the same spot and it was time to start the second half of our test. Once again, when using the feeder with just pellets, the bait came off on the surface. Like previous tests, the bait fell straight to the bottom while the feeder fell about a metre away, much closer to Polly. Again, the feeder landed the correct way up and just a few pellets remained in it. On the next cast, I asked Polly to bait the feeder with a mixture of pellets and ground bait. My thinking behind that was the ground bait would be a much needed binder to the pellets. You can see that the feeder lands perfectly and starts to break down quickly. The hook bait sits on top of the feeder for quite a while before again falling towards the front of the feeder. In my mind, the overall presentation looked a bit neater with a standard method feeder with a nice pile of bait and the hook bait quite central. Perfect for an oncoming carp. We repeated this test and on the next cast I noticed something very significant, almost a eureka moment. Usually I film the cast sitting the surface, but now and again I like to see it from a fish's perspective. On this occasion I've done just that and seen the feeder take an aggressive jolt on the surface which has pulled the bait off the feeder. This could only have been caused by Polly hitting the clip quite hard and keeping a tight line, but it did make me wonder if this had been causing the less sticky pellets to fall off the feeder. I swam to the shore and had a quick chat with him before coming up with what we considered to be a master plan. We reverted to the setup that had given us the most problems, the open feeder baited with just pellets. This time when Polly hit the clip he lowered his rod sharply causing slack line and in theory making the feeder fall straight down rather than bounce back. The difference was quite staggering, the feeder landed perfectly on the bottom with the pellets perfectly in position. The feeder broke down in a neat pile exposing the hook bait. The hook bait fell away from the feeder again but still close to the broken down pellets. It had taken some doing, but we seemed like we'd cracked the perfect presentation. To prove it wasn't a fluke, we repeated this test a few times, and each time the feeder reached the bottom with the pellet still in position. It had taken some doing, but we cracked the perfect presentation. Right then, test's over, and they've been pretty exhaustive and pretty conclusive as well. And this isn't opinion, is it? This is out and out actual fact, fact. fishing situation. Yeah. So, a number of things have affected what we've done, there's been the cast, the depth, yeah. the layout of the bottom, as in the angle yeah, of the drop, yeah. and so on and so forth, the type of feeder that we've used, and also the type of bait that we've used as well. And like t just taking the flatbed first, we saw with all of the different sizes, and certainly with the wet bait, that it came off. Yeah, yeah. Dry bait was a little bit better. Yeah. But 
we found out that a casting style and a squeeze yeah. makes the biggest difference, yeah. don't we? Yeah. Very important, the squeeze, and very important, as we found out, when you hit your clip, not holding a tight line, letting it go. Absolutely. And the reason behind that, folks, is that I was watching it underwater when it hits the surface. And basically, when you hit it on a clip, you imagine it's flying forwards, it hits the clip, and as soon as it hits the clip, it hits the water more or less at the same time, then it bounces back on that stretch. And it's that that's pulling Locks the bait it off. off, particularly if it's wet. So we thought we'd test it just with poly casting out and following through. And as soon as he did that, hit the clip, follow through with it, rather than let it bounce back. You know what? It landed on the deck exactly as it should do. Remember, the squeeze is important as yeah, well. You've yeah. got to make sure that you pack these things pretty well, haven't you? And as we found out earlier, because we've done another lot of pellets that were, say, correctly dampened, whereas we had that storm and the pellets were over-dampened, yeah, they hadn't the got that uh, body to them, that, that squeeze to them. But with the, the other lot of pellets we've done, and you can feel the difference now, yeah, you can incredible. see it as well. I know, if, incredible. Check it, check it in the edge as well. Just give it a nice squeeze in the edge. If you chuck it in, it's, it's binding together well, then they're looking good. If they look like they're going to come apart on the way down, even if you just think it's looking like it will come apart, you know what? Almost certainly too wet. You can dry them out or you can mix them because that was another thing as yeah. well. Mixing yeah. the pellet with the ground bait, that certainly helped out as well, didn't it? Well, you asked me, you said, have you got anything to mix with your pellets? And I said, well, all I ever mix is... I put some ground bait with it that yep. loosens them up and acts as a, as a bind where some people use horlicks and whatever to bind the pellets. Definitely a better hold rather than just the pellets but with a ground bait just to mix in amongst them. It give it a sort of a binding effect. Absolutely. Yeah, Let's on the feeder. Go on now to the method feeder itself as well. Obviously that's got the ribs on it. That holds the bait in a little bit better. Yeah. One of the things that I noticed over there, and, and you can't quite see it on the picture, but there is a little bit of a drop. It's falling back towards us. So it's a bit like fishing on the back of a bar facing towards you. You know, when it's hitting it, it's actually sliding it back down to, again. Yeah. It wants to come out. So there's been a few occasions where when the feeder hit the deck, the bait would pop out of it because it would almost shock it out as the feeder yeah, sliding yeah, down yeah. as well. So just be very aware of what the ground is doing. If it's falling back towards you, be aware that the feeder might slide down again. And once again, it's that lean just forward that, follow, that makes yeah. the big difference. It Hit really your clip nicely, but just follow it. It's the bottom, and then gently take the slack up. Exactly. exactly. You know, and I've seen a lot of people, they've cast, they've not only have they hit the clip, and they've caused that backdraft so the baits come off, and then they've tightened up and moved it even more, so even further away exactly. from your bait. And it can be a fair way as well. You know, it can be up to about a metre. I saw it a few times on those early casts that actually when it's hitting the water surface and the bait's falling off it, by the time it's sat on the deck, it's a metre difference. Yeah, now, yeah. we did speak earlier that you can compensate for that by overcasting. Yeah, yeah. But actually, the more we've gone through this test, if you hit it and follow just through follow through, it, just makes a massive difference. Your bait's on the feeder, your bait is in the right place, and your presentation is what you want it to be yeah, as well. So yeah. that makes a massive, massive difference. Well, that's it. End of the day. You enjoyed it? That's been I a proper eye-opener, isn't it? Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. You look cold. Oh, I am froze. I've got two bootfuls as well because I slipped off earlier. Mate, two bootfuls. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a boot full, a chest full, a head full, an ear full, a nose full. I've had about four <laughs> mouthfuls. But look, the, the key thing is that I think we've learned loads. We've clarified a few things. Yeah. We've bust a few myths as well. It's been a real, real eye-opener, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Key point for definitely. you? I reckon following forward with the feeder because you're... You're just not on your feed, if, even if it comes off. So that way, if you hit your clip and just follow forward, if the bait does come off, you're over the top. You're over it. it. You're on the area. If you win another match on the back of that, <laughs> I want some shares. You know, I'm going to be sharing that brown envelope. That's for sure. Anyway, that's it from us. We are going to be back again with more. We're out again very, very soon. You can check out everything we do on fishmatrix.co.uk and, of course, on YouTube. Next time out, we're pole fishing. <laughs>